the dangers of real estate investing. I'm Nate, I'm the Fit Future MD. I love every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Pick up your free copy of the Nutrition and Workout Guide in the description below. I'm the owner of Insercell. Insercell is family. Together we rise up from humble beginnings to inspire others all over the world with the messages on our t-shirts. High quality t-shirts, inspiring messages. Pick you up one today at insercell.com. Use code FITFUTUREMD for 20% off. So I'm here in this crazy mess out here in the real estate market, right? Interest rates are up, you know, eight, nine, 10%, you know, for some of these, uh, <clears throat> you know, real estate flippers, you know, all this kind of stuff, right? So you're seeing them, you know, because they can't find a deal on their original strategies, change their strategy. All of a sudden they're saying, oh, I'm not investing for cash flow anymore. What? Like, so you're telling me you're gonna just gonna sit, you have the money just to sit there and pay for the deal? And I think that's really what's happening in the market. These people are, you know, they've seen where it's not following the 1% rule anymore. So you're not making cash flow on the property, but you're still like the market's still going up. So they're invested hoping for appreciation, right? And uh, I see a lot of this in the stock market as well you know, what's called growth companies, companies that aren't profitable yet, you know, stuff like that. And you're expecting them to grow their revenue and therefore, you know, but there's no, and therefore you would make more money in the long term. You would make the spread. So if you bought it for $10 in five years, when they grow their revenue and become profitable, it's worth $30, right? That type of thing. That's called appreciation. And, you know, to only invest for appreciation is very dangerous. It makes uh, the risk is a lot higher on investing for appreciation than investing for cash flow, right? So I think that's what people really need to understand is that um, if you invest for appreciation, the risk goes way up because you cannot guarantee that something is going to appreciate in value um, or that uh, you know, a bank is going to say, oh, well, you know, for sure this is worth more than it was years ago and you can refinance at a cheaper interest rate or you can increase rents in an area where job growth may be stagnant, you know. Um, like I say, in the, you know, some of the biggest markets hit in the 2008 recession was because people were investing for that appreciation, right? People were going, hey, I can just refinance in a year. I can refinance next year, pull out my equity. You know, I'm not worried about whether uh, I can hold on to the property in a downturn where I can't refinance, right? Or I can't sell it to someone, right? So big danger there, right? Now, there are people out there and it's a sub 1% of the population that make 250 to 400 grand a year, right? And they um, may or may not uh, live very below their means, right? They live in a modest home, they drive modest cars, you know, they really just live to work, right? Now those people are gonna have 150, $200,000 a year you know, to invest into something, okay? Now, if you're one of those people, you know, you have a net worth and a, you can have a risk, a higher risk profile because you have a high income. However, there is no guarantee that you'll have that high income next year, right? So you have to keep that in mind as well. Now, the banks take the risk when you know, they say, oh, well, we're, well, based on your income, if you have your income every year, we'll give you this amount. Well, they lit a, you know, they decrease their risk by having the property on the line that's worth a certain amount, right? You know, so same thing there, but once again, it's no guarantee that, you know, you're gonna have a job. There's no guarantee that you're going to uh, have the property appreciate um, and finding a deal that cash flows 
decreases those risks. Now it doesn't make the risk zero, right? But, you know, it definitely decreases. It makes it, you know, if you're buying just based on cash flow, you know, you're taking, you're basically doing a coin flip, 50, 50 chance. It could go up or down, right? And you're spending money to hold the property. Whereas if you buy with cash flow, you're basically saying, you know, it's not a 50, 50 flip. It's like, it's down to a quarter, right? Because if it doesn't, uh, if the property doesn't go up in value, you still have the cash flow to take care of the property, you know, and, you know, um, you know, maybe a little money in your pocket too, but, but it's, it's basically, um, you know, the risk is a lot lower because the, per your renter would have to lose your job. You would have to lose your job, you know, to hold on to the property, to not be able to hold on to the property. Right. Right. And, um, but don't get me wrong. These rich people that had that high income, you know, they absolutely can invest for appreciation. Right. And that's what they're talking about right now. They're saying, Oh, I'm investing for appreciation. I'm going to go buy this $25 million house, you know, a one of one home and in five years when it's worth 40 I'm gonna sell it all right and you know and that makes sense when you are worth 250 million dollars but I'm not gonna go say oh I'm gonna go buy you know an average four hundred thousand dollar home and guarantee that it's gonna go to five hundred thousand in five years while I'm paying down the debt right myself right most people don't even have any extra income at the end of the month. You know, they're trying to get people to invest in these four unit properties, you know, with 5% down because they can't get, they can't get enough people to have enough cash to put the 20% down for it. Right. So that just goes to show you that people just don't have the money, right? Most people, 90% of people do not have any extra cash. Right. So you, and Honestly, maybe that needs to change before you even invest in real estate. But um, like I say, I personally believe, you know, if you can get into a home, you absolutely should. You know, if you have to, you know, double up with a friend even and take that risk, right? And y'all split it together and make the profit together. Like it's better than, than renting in my opinion, right? Um, like you say, and there's arguments against that if you're gonna be jumping around from job to job and moving cities and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I'm from North Carolina, I'm staying in North Carolina. Like, it makes no sense to wait, you know, for me to get a property, right, and live in it, right? So, but uh, the biggest thing that people do when they move into properties and live in them is they over flip them, right? They over, they say, oh, I want this nice bar that you're never gonna get the money back for or um, stuff like that, right? Or, you know, something that, you know, so we buy, you know, we buy houses that, you know, you renovate, right? And then live in. So, you know, what's called a value add, right? Take something old and you make it new. Well, you don't want to make it where it's a it's the white elephant of the neighborhood right where nobody wants to buy it nobody wants to live in it it's got a weird layout you know that kind of thing so i just wanted to come up here and t and talk to regular people who are investing in real estate you know who want to invest in real estate and make sure they realize that you know you should still be following the one percent rule right and you know just because somebody that's making 1% is in the 1% of people is telling you to, oh no, just do it for appreciation. You know, that's what these investors in New York and California and all that kind of stuff have been doing, you know, since 2012, right? They're investing for appreciation. They got no cash flow. And, you know, that's fine when you're making four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000 a year. But when you're making, you're an average person making 60K a year, that's not, that's not going to work out, right? Um, like I say, you can go and do the risk, you know, 
do the work and wholesale and get your income up and stuff like that and then take a risk like that. But, you know, you're not going to do that on a regular 60K a year job, right? It's just not, the risk is going, the risk is too much. It will bankrupt you and ruin 10 years of your life, right? That's basically the point. Um, you know, somebody that's worth 200 mil or 100 mil and they risk a million, you know, that's nothing to them, right? But somebody who's making 60K and you're risking it on 400K, you know, that's your, that's your, um, you know, that's a quarter of your lifetime earnings as a risk. Like it's crazy to even think about risking something like that. And it's basically uh, just for greed, right? So get into something safer, um, you know, invest in your own home that you live in, right? If you want to house hack that, that's great, you know, to get a little extra income or whatever. Like I say, we, uh, you know, Airbnb our home, right? Um, and was able, you know, to cash flow a little bit like that, right? Because obviously, you know, we don't need a full three bedroom house, right? You know, we've been used to living in one bedroom apartments, you know, since we started college back in, I started in you know, college in 2006, right? So, you know, we're used to one bedroom apartments anyway, right? So if you got a three bedroom house, might as well rent out the other two bedrooms, right? So, but you know, people don't want to do that either. People have children, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, find the way that works for you. But when you think about stuff like this, think about the risk, right? Because you don't want to be a slave, you know, to a to bankruptcy for 10 years to make 30 grand, right? Or to make 50 grand, right? So that's just my thoughts on it. Um, like I say, beware of these charlatans that are coming out there and saying, hey, you know, just go buy whatever it's going to go up a hundred grand you know don't worry about it if it cash flows like it all could come crashing down we're 37 trillion in debt in the u.s right you know they've already downgraded our uh credit rating in the u.s like you know things could get wild so keep that in mind i'm nate i'm the fit future md hope this helps you out guys hope this kind of brings like a a realization to you that you know there is risk in real estate you know, a lot of real estate guys think there's zero risk and it's just not true, right? So shop at InsterSale.com, high quality tees, inspirational messages, wear your inspiration today, use code FITFUTUREMD for 20% off, share the video with somebody that needs it, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.